Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. My name is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International. We meet behind the trade fair at Life Cathedral, bringing to you matters of faith with Graphic Online. There is a very interesting story in the Bible, and it is in the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 4. A man came preaching the word, and the Bible said his name was John the Baptist. I like to call him John Baptist. His name was John the Baptist. And when he came, to uh, preach, you know, God sent him. The Bible describes that there was a man sent from God. And the Bible said when he came to, to preach, the Bible says some funny things about him that I was like, what? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Did you notice the type of food he was eating in, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 4 onwards? Did you notice the food John the Baptist was eating? The Bible was saying John the Baptist was feasting on locusts and wild honey. Locust and wild honey. I, I mean, you know what like locust is like grasshopper and wild honey. So you can you can Im imagine uh, John the Baptist running after grasshopper. I mean, the grasshopper is just jumping from and then he'll be snatching them in the air and then he'll be he'll be eating them. You know, he'll be locust. He'll be eating locust. And the Bible says, and wild honey. I mean, no one would tell you that this. Hmm. You might ask the question, is he deranged? You might ask the person, or you might, if you're like me, I'll squeeze my face. I might not really express it. But somebody will say, yuck. Locust and wild honey. That was the food of John the Baptist. And then I began to look at it very, very carefully. What is there? What is the principle there? You know what locust is? Locust is the destroyer. Locust is the one that decimates the farm lands, decimates the farm products. Anytime there's a plague of locust in, in the Bible, in Egypt, it decimated their, 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 uh, their farms, destroyed all their livelihood, their food livelihood. So locust is a destroyer. And if you read, if you read the book of Joel, you know, God began to describe certain things that were destructions. He said, what the locust has eaten, what the palmer worm has eaten, what the canker worm has eaten, I will restore. So God himself acknowledges that locust is a destructive thing. It's a destructive uh, creature. And wherever it goes, it spreads, it spreads famine. Wherever it goes, it destroys things. And the Bible said John the Baptist, you get it, was taking the destructive thing and eating it up. And I was like, wow, that is very interesting. Now, normally, People move away from things that are destructive. Normally, people move away from those things that are like challenges, things that are hard, things that are difficult. People move away from it. But John the Baptist was going around and then picking those things from the end and then, um, and then just chewing them. And the Bible said, now he did something that was very interesting. He was mixing the locust with wild honey. So when he takes the locust and throws it into his system, then he picks wild honey and then sweetens it. So the wild honey changes the flavor of the locust. The, the wild honey makes the locust sumptuous food. The wild honey makes that thing which was destructive a nice meal to have. Then I began to sit up, okay, if locust is the destructive thing, then what is the wild honey? When we talk about honey, it talks about the revelatory word of God, the exposed word of God, the rima word of God, the proceeding word of God. So guess what? Guess what uh, uh, John Baptist would do? He would take the trouble, then he would take the revealed word of God, marry them, and then he would chew them up. So by virtue of the, of, of the revelation he had, by virtue of the principle, by virtue of the word, the revelatory word. Okay, let's go. Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, uh, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also as honey and the honeycomb. And in 1 Samuel chapter 14, if you remember, when Jonathan dipped his rod in the, in the honey, and the honey touched his lips, his eyes were opened. 
That means it, it came into revelation. Now, so, wild honey is the undiluted, un, 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 un messed up word of God. So, uh, John the Baptist picks up the trouble, then picks up God's word, marries the thing, and it uses it. So, guess what? There's, there's fear. You're walking through the valley of fear. Then you say you pick up God's word and say, Yet yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And then you're going through some storms and say, When you go through the storms, I will be with you. When you are in the pit, then in the pit, and when everyone says, Why? You deliver Daniel from the pit, and you can also deliver me from the pit. You deliver Joseph from the pit, and you can also deliver me from the pit. So you, you know that word becomes a faith builder for the troubles that you face. So instead of running away from the trouble, face the trouble with God's word. And I can assure you that listen, nothing, he said heaven and earth will pass away, but not an earth of his word. God watches over his word to perform. So you know what? Let the trouble come. Let the storms rise. Let the oceans roar. Let the thunders roar. Let the lightning strike. Let COVID come. But guess what? God's word which is, cannot be changed. He watches over his word to perform. Forever, O oh Lord, that word is settled. That is what will make us ride the storm. That will be our encouragement. That will be that which gives us the power and the energy and the faith and the confidence to look at issues and say, this, it will pass. No story, no distance is forever. God's word, that was what John was doing. So guess what? John the Baptist was taking trouble, and then he was marrying trouble with God's word. An appropriate word for that particular situation. God was marrying not just any word, but a rima word. He was taking an appropriate word and marry it to the situation. When you marry it to the situation, that is what brings result. So that trouble will become cannon fodder. That trouble will become a meal. That trouble is rather going to go into your distance and build nourishment in you and build confidence in you, and build faith in you, so that you can tell others that I went through it and I passed. Why? Because of this word. You know one thing? Various word for various situations. Sometimes when you're going through a valley moment, this is a time for you to say, yea, though I walk through. So you're walking through. That's that Bible scripture. That's it. So that is what gives you the confidence. So you know what? Don't sit in the trouble. Don't bow your head in the trouble. Don't say to the trouble that I'm afraid. Ah, you have no idea who the God you serve is. He has supplied his word and the word is right out there. Because you do not know the word, that is why you're running away from the trouble. Because you do not know the word, that is why you see the trouble, the locust looks so big. The level of destruction looks so big. But I can tell you this, if you know his word, then you will realize that what you see is no problem at all, or you can rather chew it up and eat it. God bless you. Yak yak menu, or questionable food, or but the marriage of the locust and the wild honey produces strength and confidence for John the Baptist. John Baptist, he can also do the same for you. Don't be afraid of the locust. Chew it up with the revelatory word of God. God bless you. See you the next time.